Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazaris from the Automator. And the other day, someone wrote me, and they said, "Hey, we, you know, I can't install Auto Hotkey, so I'm trying to use something else." And I'm like, "Don't, don't you know? You don't need to actually install Auto Hotkey. You don't have to." Yeah. So yeah. this video, we're going to show you not only kind of how to get around it, but also some of the things that are really nice to know of how to deal with it if you don't install "quote unquote" install Auto Hotkey. That is correct. So um, Auto Hotkey, if you already have a computer, a personal computer. In which you have a hotkey, you can just grab the executable and put it in another computer, and then you can drag and drop your scripts into that executable, and it will launch. So um, that's one way of doing it. So imagine this. Sorry to interrupt you. Is this? Imagine if you had Microsoft Word installed. If you were to take a Word file and drag it on top of the executable, Word would launch with that file, file. right? And it's yes. the same thing in what you're doing. So one of the things that uh, uh, if you don't have AutoHotKey either installed in any machine or you don't have anything, you can go to the AutoHotKey website, right? So you go there, is click on the download button here. And instead of clicking one of these, because those are the installer versions, you can click on other versions and you have access to the portable versions of AutoHotKey, which you can just now click on one of those. The internet is going to um, well, the file is going to be downloaded. I already had one in there, but you can go there, open the folder. I had it twice just because I tried twice, but um, let me just do this. We, we do recommend using V2 uh, unless yes. you're trying to borrow older scripts and there's a lot of yeah. V1 out there, then maybe you want V1. But yeah, does actually, and this will be interesting because I don't know the answer to this. Do, does the portable version have both executables? No, just the V2 in this case. Okay. It has the 32 and 64 bit, yep. but not both are hotkey versions. Right. You can download the, them separately here. So depending on which version you want to run, then that's what you have to download. And then you just click on it, extract it. And now here we go. So we have the two executables here. So we have the 32 bit version, the 64 bit. And here's the interesting part. You can just create a file. Let's just create a new file, text document. This is a test.ahk file. Um, let's open the script, the, the file. Oh, it has the wrong extension here. Yeah, no pattern. Um, pattern. But yeah, so in this case, I say message box. This is a test. Save it. Now, as the file is a TXT file, let me let me change that real quick. I'm going to view, sorry, go to the options and tell it not to hide the extensions for known file types. That way it shows me the full extensions and I can change it. So now I remove the TXT part of it and you will notice that the system doesn't know how to open that file. So I, I got this blank thing. If I double click on it, it's going to ask me, hey, what do you want to do with this file? That's OK. But if you just drag this file onto the executable, it will work. So you get the message box that I just created. That's it. You can drag and drop. But once you have this set up, you just put this file wherever you want. You can just right click and select the open with command. And then you see this option that says always, well, let's pick an app. In this case, I can go to my downloads folder or wherever you put this folder, you can put it anywhere. And you hit open and then select the option to always open files with that executable. And now you just have to double click on it and it will just open with that all the time. Funny thing, if you have a script that you compiled it, right? So if you right click and compile this, so if you compile it, you will get a test.executable, right? That compiled script works the same as if it was autohotkey.exe. So if in your computer, you compile your script into an executable, you don't need autohotkey in the new computer because it is an executable. And you can drag and drop any scripts into it and it still launches them. So it is another quick way of having an autohotkey um executable somewhere else and just to but, remind you yeah. if you're prohibited from going to the uh, autohockey.com and downloading the file you can do that on a different computer throw it on a thumb drive right yeah. um and, or or put it onto your gmail right or something right and download it that way right you just need to yeah. get it onto your main computer that you're trying to use it on 
somewhere. The only thing that you need is an auto hotkey executable or a compiled script, a compiled uh, auto hotkey script that is an .exe. And then you just drag and, and drop the files there. Or as I just mentioned, just select the open with and set it to that file. And it will always open with right. that. And as they already showed, auto hockey file the file the scripts that we use they are plain text files so you yeah. could use notepad to edit your file um, yeah. and for that you know, here's the the fun part if you don't have it installed you're going to have to be dragging that text file into notepad or telling notepad to open that file either way yeah there are you also can other... select open with and open it with notepad but oh. only once for example okay. so you can just say okay. select right. notepad just once and now i can edit the script but it's still going to be mapped so to my auto hot yeah. thing so so right. now i can just modify it how many times i want and then when i double click it will still be associated with the executable that i just told it to be associated with so now, you can do this all just once right and, and with auto hockey there are some main editors out there actually your toolkit would be a great one also to, to bring up yeah. uh, for using for doing simple things but these you know certain versions don't need to be quote unquote installed they have portable versions just like auto hockey so site for auto hockey yes. has a portable version studio it requires a dll but it's actually an auto hockey script which actually for that matter so is site right is it's like yes. it's, it's just a compiled yes. version but it's an auto hockey right. script um and then there's vs code which right. is the ferrari of everything but it's also <laughs> it, you know what it is it, a better example i think would be it's the jetliner like it's got <laughs> the dials you know what i mean like if you were to yeah, for, for yeah, small yeah, pilot, so just, many dials. so many things like you know yeah. it's overkill but it has this cool functionality that you can go to vscode.dev that is a website and now you have vs code on the web and you don't have to install it on your computer so you can use it to do simple editing very quickly if you're used to vs code um you just have to go to the extension tabs and install um auto hotkey v2 uh the language support for that all of what you're installing here is on the browser storage so if you clear your cookies or your uh data it disappears but if you're not clearing your cookies and stuff every time you open vs code.dev now that is already installed and now i can just open a file or a folder right um and I can open in this case the desktop because that's what the thing is. Oh, that's interesting. The S code is restricted to not opening system files, and the desktop has the desktop.ini file. I guess it's, it's a very specific thing. I can put this in a different folder. Let's put it here on the downloads. I guess I could put it here. Um, open that folder. Let's go to the downloads. Oh, still. Oh, I'm in a sandbox. It's a little bit tricky. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot do that. So, but if you're not in a sandbox, you will be able to open that um, that folder. Let me see if there's any folder that I can open. No, I cannot open any folders. It, it open is just because it's restricted. Did you just open the file. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's cool. I was able to open the pictures folder. So let's drag this into the pictures folder. Um, refresh this and now I have my test.ashk. You will not have these restrictions if you're in a normal computer. It's just that I'm in a sandbox environment and it is really restricted. But here now I do have my file and I get all the benefits of working with VS code with the getting all the, yeah. the IntelliSense, all the things, the autocomplete and everything. And that's perfect because I sometimes need to know everything. Uh, but I do not have VS Code installed on my computer. Which what happens if you hit F1? F1, like Control F1? Um, Bring up the help is what it works. Yeah, exactly. So the, the help would be Control F1 in this case. It didn't bring it. Okay. Seems to be that it is, as it is the web version, you cannot do that. But VS Code also comes with the portable version. So if you go to vscode.com um, to download, uh, it has okay. a zip version. You don't have to install it either. Again. Yeah. If you're new to auto hockey, I, I don't we, recommend, we, we recommend I don't even right. use VS Code. Like no, it's, it's, it's yeah. an advanced editor. Um, right. it is handy. I, I still prefer either site or studio. Um, or as AS says AHK toolkit, which is a, a free right. tool you can get from the automator. And uh it's 
all of those are great for editing simple things and they're they're much simpler to set up and to use. And in any case, if you don't have any, just right click, yeah, open with so notepad and you can go ahead and do whatever you want there. It's just a, a headache sometimes if the script is too big, but if you just have a few right. lines of code, then that works just fine too. Yeah. Awesome. So if you enjoyed that video, um, you might want to subscribe. We publish videos twice a week here from the Automator always teaching you how to save time and to be more efficient. We also have a lot of courses on AutoHotKey. So if you're interested, take a look at our courses. Our, we have intro to AutoHotKey in both V1 and V2. So to, regardless of which approach you're trying to learn, we got that got you covered there. Or our AutoHotKey Hero Group, which is where we have all levels of people that come in and we have three hours a week where we teach AutoHotKey and help them solve their problems with what they're working on. Plus there's access to a Telegram group and you get 25% off of our courses or project work if you hire us for something. So. Hope you enjoyed that. Like the video if you learned something. Uh, I hope to see you next time. Cheers.